Lou, the promises are really public relations. Most of the major oil companies don't own their gas stations right. and so can't control what those retailers charge. Uh, it, it's an extraordinary situation that, uh, that anyone would take advantage here. Uh, I, I guess that, uh, one of the first things we should do is take our hands off to Exxon, Mobil, and BP, Amico for having uh, uh, the courage to freeze those wholesale prices and exact it whatever discipline they can. Uh, and I, I, I will tell you that I'm sure that we and other New York news organizations are committed uh, to publicize those companies which both uh, hold the line appropriately and with integrity and those certainly who fail to do so. The glare of publicity has already resulted in some service stations at least lowering the prices they jacked up yesterday. Well, how much of this are we seeing in other industries? Uh, we are not seeing very much of it in other industries at all. We uh, have heard scattered complaints by consumers about car rental companies, but uh, no real evidence that they've changed their rates at all. The same is true with hotels with stranded travelers around the country. No what, what can be done here? The interesting question is, from a legal standpoint, there isn't very much. You know, from a federal level, uh, you have to prove that oil companies colluded or that oil gas stations colluded when they raised prices. That, they're no more likely to be able to prove that than that banks colluded when they raised the prime lending rate. On a state level, some states have legislation in place that allows them to act. Other states just simply do not. It is not against the law to raise prices. Okay. Well, it's against a lot of other laws. All right. Deborah, thank you. Deborah Marchini. Well, the world, of course, is struggling to address the magnitude of this tragedy and its effect on the worldwide economy. One economist today warning that a full-blown global recession is highly likely, end quote. Another said that while there's always talk that disasters have extreme consequences, they rarely do. Let's go now to someone who, uh, who should know about such things, our economics correspondent Kathleen Hayes. Kathleen, both welcome and uh, over to you. Thank you, Lou. Thank you very much. Well, I would like to start by saying that the president of the uh, F Dallas Federal Reserve Bank, Bob McTeer, uh, pulled himself together and gave a speech today in Texas. And one of the things he said about the economy is it's too soon to assess the macroeconomic consequences. And I think we're going to be hearing that kind of commentary from Fed officials for the next few days. They need to see things settle. They especially need to see the financial markets open and get going again before they really make any conclusions. Beyond that, it's ironic that rebuilding after this calamity is going to be a stimulus to the economy. We'll see a larger GDP at some point. We won't see a subtraction for all the destruction. In the near term, Kitty Pilgrim just talked about the impact on retail sales. Deborah just talking about this big spike in gas prices. Now that's going to take money out of people's pockets. A very important question is consumer confidence. It's fragile. We know the economy is weak and now the question is what will this do? So it's a big question in terms of the economy. Um, and then, of course, there's also some questions about the Federal Reserve. Um, McTeer also in his speech today made the point that the Federal Reserve is fully functioning. And while people are talking a lot about what size interest rate cut we're going to get, the first thing the Fed is doing is making sure that there is plenty of liquidity for the banks, for the financial markets to keep going. Well, Kathleen, you, you make a very important point talking about liquidity versus interest rate cuts. A lot of focus until this tragedy on interest rate cuts. But uh, moving $80 billion of liquidity into the world financial system, as the central banks have done, is uh, frankly far more important. Absolutely, because as, as you know, the, the, the thing we have to do is maintain confidence in our financial system, and that's one, of the, that's one of the Fed's first priorities, is to back up the system in times of distress. You remember in the 1987 stock market crash, one of the first things Greenspan did was to come out and say the Fed stands ready to provide liquidity. And the, the confidence that's being asserted in these markets, uh, the, uh, the New York Bond Club uh, had, uh, had uh, canceled its uh, meeting uh, for tomorrow night, and we learned today that indeed that's been changed. That's very interesting, isn't it, Lou? Um, very important that apparently the White House said, no, don't cancel the speech. We want Mr. Lindsay to speak. Again, we want to show the world that we are still up and running. Um, parallel to that, the Bond Market Association, which apparently is calling for trading tomorrow. This is a recommendation. They make it clear. Nobody has to trade. Right. And the dealers themselves have a lot of questions about the phone systems. Only one broker right now is fully functioning. But apparently, um, I spoke to a couple of people who are members, and they say that there was a considerable urging, if not pressure, from the Treasury Department to, if you please could, go out and trade tomorrow. And, and we should be clear, the men and women who run these brokerages and these bond houses, they want that trading restored as well to establish uh, uh, vigor and stability uh, in the world. Uh, uh, fixed income markets well, as well. And don't you get the feeling when you talk to people too that so many people have lost colleagues, comrades, and I think also maybe out of respect for them to keep going and to maintain a, a very strong tradition and pride yeah. that these people are really have as professionals in their business. Yeah.
you you see in a tragedy like this, and fortunately there has never been a tragedy like this with its dimension, that Wall Street is about uh, a lot more than simply money and greed and fear. It's about a commitment to a way of life as well, and we're going to see that amply demonstrated. Uh, I know we're all sure over the next several days. Yes. Kathleen, thank you. Thank Kathleen you. Hayes. Well, in the wake of yesterday's attacks, uh, Washington is taking dramatic steps to ensure financial stability uh, both here and abroad. And Tim O'Brien has that part of our story tonight. Tim? Lou, the Bush administration and the Federal Reserve have acted firmly over the last 36 hours to assure the safety of the U.S. financial system, even with some senior U.S. officials traveling overseas. Alan Greenspan was back at the Fed by early afternoon, returning via U.S. military jet from meetings in Switzerland. But even from Europe, the Fed chairman did direct the injection of billions of dollars of added liquidity into the system. The Fed also made what it calls a substantially higher level of loans directly to banks yesterday through its discount window. The Fed tells Moneyline that it will keep that source of liquidity available past normal working hours today to ensure stability. Greenspan and the Fed are acting in concert with other central bankers, pumping a reported $120 billion of added liquidity into world markets. Meanwhile, Treasury Secretary Paul O'Neill is returning to Washington, cutting short an official visit to Asia. O'Neill called the nation's financial markets strong and resilient and expressed his belief they would continue to operate smoothly. The International Monetary Fund has also been watching world markets. While expressing dismay over the attacks against the U.S., IMF Managing Director Horst Kohler issued a statement saying the IMF projects only a limited impact on the international economy. The IMF and World Bank are also facing suggestions from city officials here in Washington that they postpone or cancel their annual meetings scheduled for September 29th and 30th here. Sources at both organizations tell Moneyline no decision has been made, but the issue will face serious discussion in coming days. Lou? Tim, thank you. Tim O'Brien from Washington. Well, I'd like to close with a few personal words tonight. As we have looked at the, uh, the devastation, we continue to watch uh, what is apparently the uh, uh, collapse of further structures in downtown Manhattan. There's an overwhelming sense of loss here. The men and women you listen to uh, each night here on CNN uh, all have friends, uh, people we have worked with, people we talk with, to bring you the, the best information we can about markets and this economy every night. But as we share the pain and the loss, we also know that as this rebuilding begins, that we will, in point of fact, renew commitment to larger ideals, something called democratic capitalism. This remains the heart of that spirit and that effort, and I believe firmly you will see that come to reality in the days and the weeks ahead as we build anew. I'm Lou Dobbs in New York. Good night, and now Aaron Brown. Lou, thank you. Thank you for your work and your words there. We continue to keep our eye behind the smoke there on One Liberty Plaza. This is the building that about an hour or so ago, officials started to evacuate people from ground zero, getting them out of there because they began to believe that that building might collapse. Periodically, we have seen pieces of glass, pieces of facing fall off the building. It is very clear to us as we look down on the scene uh, that uh, almost everyone, not quite everyone, has been moved back. One of the markers for us all day has been a fire truck which has been pouring water on uh, Building 7 of the World Trade Complex, one of the buildings that collapsed. Uh, that fire truck about 10 minutes ago stopped pouring water and is now, at least so appears to me, backing out of there. Uh, again, this is just eyeballing this. Uh, we don't see anyone down there that we would describe as a civilian. Everybody has been pulled out. Uh, about 10 minutes or so ago, Mayor Giuliani and Joe Alba, the FEMA director, the Federal Emergency Management Agency director, uh, walked to the scene. They were followed by a large motorcade. They walked to the scene. Uh, that is the situation. We keep our eye on the building, and we go back to Judy Woodruff in Washington. Judy. And uh, you are, of course, recapping uh, what, what we do know at this point about what's going on in New York. I know CNN at one point had confirmed that at least part of that structure at One Liberty Plaza had actually uh, caved in. And I know we're going to follow it and come back to you as 
uh, as soon as need be if, uh, if uh, something uh, more happens there. I will just tell you that here in Washington, a flag was unfurled this evening at the Pentagon uh, near the site of where the commercial jet uh, plowed into that building yesterday. The flag there to welcome President Bush, uh, who went to the Pentagon to look at the damage and to talk to workers to offer his consolation. Uh, I, I think uh, you have to say, looking at that flag, that I, it, it clearly is a symbol that the United States, the Pentagon, indeed the United States, will prevail no matter what enemies of this country might do to us. Uh, CNN's John Carl, Jonathan Carl, has been uh, at the Capitol all day uh, talking to members of Congress. Jonathan, uh, bring us up to date from there. Well, two things you should know about, Judy. One is that there's been serious discussion among the members of the Congress here, both House and Senate, about whether or not there would be a need to have a declaration of war against who? It's unclear right now, but a declaration of war against whatever state or non-state entities might have been involved in these attacks. This is an idea that's been pushed very strongly by many Republicans, including Arlen Specter, talked about it on the floor of the Senate today, and also on the Democratic side, Robert Torricelli talked about some kind of declaration of war part of the uh, discussion here, but let me tell you, Judy, as you saw, the Congress passed what it did pass today, which was a more generalized resolution condemning this and calling for uh, support for the president and his response. You did see uh, talk from many members that we are already at war. The other thing I want to bring you up to date on is the question of how to pay for all the damage. Now, the, we do know that this morning that the president himself did ask congressional leaders, I know you, you're going to talk to Tom Daschle shortly, for essentially a blank check for enough money as would be necessary to deal with this. Congressional uh, investigators here looked into what the president was. What happened when, the Pearl, when Pearl Harbor was bombed? Was the president given a blank check? Well, no. Congressional uh, uh, staffers here have looked into it. They have found never has the Congress turned over the power of the purse to the president, even in a time of emergency as is this. So right now, on both House and Senate side, you have uh, appropriators working with the White House, trying to come up with a figure of how much money they would need to deal with this, and they are offering whatever money is necessary, but there will be a number. I've been told it's going to be $11 billion or more. The House is hoping to actually debate this and have this on the floor of the House by tomorrow morning, providing the money that will be necessary to clean up what we're seeing in New York and, of course, do everything else that is uh, associated with dealing with this emergency. Judy. All right, Jonathan Carl of the Capitol, and as you say, the Senate Majority Leader Tom Daschle does join us now. Senator, what about that figure of $11 billion? Does that, uh, is that what uh, Congress is going to end up offering the president? Well, Judy, I think it's premature to come to any conclusion as to what the figure will be. I think we can say for absolutely certain that uh, we're going to use whatever resources may be required. We'll work with the administration. We'll get our best assessment as to what the costs will entail, and uh, we will appropriate that amount. But there will not be a dispute in this city about the amount of money to commit to uh, because uh, we're, we're committed to doing all that it takes to make sure that the resources will be there. Well, Senator, when, it, when uh, it was clear that the Congress would not offer the president a, a so-called blank check, what does that mean the president would not get that he'd be asking for? Well, the president hasn't asked for a blank check, to my knowledge. Uh, what he has said is that he wanted to work with us to find the appropriate uh, amount of resources that will be required to ensure that we can address all of the many, many challenges that we know we're going to face. What we have said in return is that we are prepared to work with you to come up with whatever requirements uh, may be necessary through appropriations, and that's where it's been left right now. We'll know a lot more, and we'll be a lot more specific as we have uh, uh, time available to us to make those decisions and to acquire the information required. Senator, what should the United States do now in, by way of retaliation? Well, I think the most important thing we can do now, uh, first and foremost, is to recognize the tremendous loss, Judy, that uh, has been experienced. I don't think uh, anyone ought to minimize that. And any time we talk about future action, we've got to go to where the, the real tragedy lies. And that's with the loss of families and the loss of, 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 of so much of human life in, recent, uh, in the last 24 hours. Beyond that, I think it's important for us to gather all of the information. Uh, I think everybody is so angry they want to hit somebody. But before we hit somebody, we better know who the somebody is. We better have our facts. We better have our information. And we better have a plan. Senator, as I'm talking to you, we're looking at pictures of President Bush uh, 
visiting the Pentagon a little while ago, uh, meeting with uh, employees there, uh, obviously offering his condolences, uh, talking to people, uh, having inspected the damage. This uh, this footage.